This is one of multiple videos discussing open daylight, Docker, and software-defined networking. One of the great things about being able to virtualize an open flow network in GNS3 is that you can use Wireshark to see what's going on. Next message is a barrier request message. In the OpenFlow specification, we can see that a barrier request reply message are used by the controller to ensure message dependencies have been met or to receive notifications for completed operations. The controller wants to make sure that the switch has done what it's been told to do. So it sends a barrier request and we get a barrier response. Now we've got a role request from the controller to the switch. Role request messages are used by the controller to set the role of its OpenFlow channel or to query that role. This is mostly useful when the switch connects to multiple controllers. So notice what the switch replies with. Role equal. And now we have a multi-part message. Notice OFPMP description. Again, you can get all of these details from the OpenFlow specification. But if I did a quick search for that message, we can see details in the OpenFlow specification. This is a description of the OpenFlow switch. The request body is empty. So the switch now replies saying that it's a Nasira switch. The hardware description is open v switch. Software description is version 2.4.0. There's no serial number and no data path description. The next message is the controller looking for meter features. In other words, does the switch support metering or rate limiting, group feature request, and port description request. It's a multi-message. It's requesting multiple things from the switch. The switch now replies with its capabilities. In this case, it doesn't support rate limiting or bursting. So there's no max bands and no colors. What about group features? The switch does support various group features. So it supports the all group, the select group, indirect group, and an abstracted group. You can find out the details of groups in the OpenFlow specification. Here are port descriptions. So we can see port number 10, it's Ethernet 10. We can see its MAC address. Back on the switch, OVS VS Kettle or VS CTL show, we can see interface ETH 10 as an interface controlled by OpenFlow. We can see other ports, such as port 8. But let's scroll down and look for port 1. Here's port 1. We can see the current speed of the port. That port is connected in our OpenFlow network, so it's showing a speed. On the controller, if we go to nodes, and look at node connectors, we can see various ports displayed on the OpenFlow controller, including the local port and port one. Role request is set to no change from the controller. Now it's asking for the tables on the switch. So here we've got the tables on the switch. We've got table statistics, so here's table zero. Here's table one, and that continues all the way down to table 253. So 254 tables are supported on this OpenFlow switch. The controller is now writing flows to the switch. Here's an example of a flow modification message from the controller to the switch. So here's the flow modification. It's written to table zero. 
idle timeout is set to zero and hard timeout is set to zero. Idle timeout means that if there are no matches against that flow entry, it will be removed. Hard timeout is a value that when it expires, causes the flow to be removed from the switch. They're both set to zero, which means they won't be used. Priority is two for this flow entry. Notice the cookie is set to 5A at the end. So on our OpenFlow switch, if we include 5A, we can see the flow entry here on the switch. We can see as an example, the priority set to two, table is zero, traffic coming in on port 11, So notice matching port ingress port 11 is gonna have an instruction, apply action, send traffic out of port 13. There's port 13, scrolling down, port 12, there's port 12, scroll even further, there's port nine. So here's port nine, and the last port should be the controller port and there you go. So send the traffic to the controller. Here's port 10. So actions is output to port 10. So notice instruction, action, output port to port 10. Action, output to 10. The controller writes additional flow entries so here's a flow entry with cookie 5B. So I'll search for 5B. And here's the flow entry. So in Wireshark, you can see very clearly what's negotiated between the switch and the controller. Here's an example of a packet in message. So we had a packet in message. Notice the protocol here is LLDP. The controller uses LLDP to discover the links between the switches. So in the topology, this link between the switches is discovered using LLDP. The controller sends a message to the switch. It's a packet out message telling the switch to forward packets out of all ports. So you can see it's a packet out message going out of various ports and inside the data we can see that it's a LLDP message. So the controller is sending LLDP messages to the switches, which are then flooded out of all ports as instructed, and the messages come back to the controller as shown here in the packet in message. That's how the controller can discover the links between the two switches. Again, GNS3, makes the process of learning technologies like this a lot easier because you can create a virtual network in GNS3 and then use Wireshark to capture the messages and see what's going on. So by simply capturing Wireshark messages here, I'm able to see the negotiation between the controller and OpenFlow switches in my network. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.